helps. We get loads of questions via email and in the Telegram group about all aspects of crypto. So we thought we'd just sort of go through some of uh, the top ones. So I'm just going to fire questions at your cash and you're sure. spontaneously going to uh, shower everyone with your crypto wisdom. How does that sound? Yeah, well, it sounds great. Let's go for it. <laughs> okay. So question number one, and you kind of touched on this already, actually. How much money do I need to get started, I guess, in crypto? You know, if somebody wants to build a little cryptocurrency portfolio. Yeah. So uh, that's a great question. And it's a question I get a lot. Uh, cryptocurrency is a highly volatile asset. You know, you can see massive price swings in either direction. Uh, the number one rule when it comes to investing, and especially with crypto, is to only invest with money you can afford to lose. So that could be £10, that could be £100 for one person, it could be a million pounds for another person. Mm. It really depends on the individual person. So only invest with money you can afford to lose because there is no guarantee that it could um, you know, return you money and it could go to zero. There is no guarantee of profits. Yeah. But like you said, you can you, you can get started with 100 quid, really, Like, because a lot of the you can buy little. Yeah, tiny you can buy fractions. small amounts and that could go yeah. up a thousand percent and you can make a lot yeah. of money through that. But only invest with money you can afford to use. Yeah, it's really sensible advice. And it's kind of one of those mantras that people hear a lot, but you really need to take it to heart, I think. Absolutely. And actually follow it because <laughs> a lot of people do crazy things like take out loans. I, mean, I see, I see like comments on Reddit all the time where people yeah. are taking out <laughs> loans right at the top. They've gone yeah. all in and it's gone, you know, it's gone down and now they're in debt. So there's some more advice. Don't read Reddit. That's advice from me. <laughs> um, okay, question number two. What's the easiest way to buy cryptocurrency for somebody somebody that's never done it before, maybe? Yep, so buying cryptocurrency is a lot easier than before. Before, you had to find, you have to create uh, accounts on multiple different exchanges because not all coins were available on like, one exchange. But now, um, but you know, with, because of Binance and because of Coinbase, you can simply create an account on one of those um, exchanges Add your preferred payment method. It could be credit card, debit card, uh, whichever you uh, prefer. And then you just select the coin that you want to purchase and you click buy and it just appears in your wallet. Most of these exchanges will provide a wallet for free so you can store your assets on there free of charge um, anyway. Yeah, it's super easy now. I'd say it's like it's similar to sort of doing Forex trading or something like that. Like it's, it is just sort of registering account and like, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so the next question is, how do I store my crypto safely? Like, is it safe to leave it on a an, on a, an exchange? Say I buy some crypto on Binance or Coinbase. Can I leave it there? Should I put it somewhere else? Like, what are my options? That's a good question. So most of these exchanges, such as you know Binance, Coinbase, they uh, implement industry grade security. Um, so you're you're well protected in in terms of you know not getting hacked and uh, having your assets stolen, but the, the issue is that a lot of people, they use the same email address and they use the same password for most of uh, for many of their accounts. So mm. if another one of their accounts gets hacked, then hackers, of course, seeing the lucrative uh, nature of cryptocurrencies, they're, they're bound to try to access your accounts on these exchanges as well. Um, so one thing you can do is store these assets on a private wallet. So again, wallets are free to set up. Um, you, for, for example, for Ethereum, you can use Metamask for... Uh, Bitcoin, you can use Trust Wallet. These are all, or even Coinbase Wallet. These are apps you can download on your on your smartphone, um, and you can just store your assets on there. Uh, but of course, when it comes to creating accounts with these exchanges, another tip would be to use a different email address so that if one of your other email addresses gets hacked, these um, hackers and scammers won't access to, have access to your assets on these crypto exchanges. Yeah, that's a, that's good advice, and to use the two factor. Uh, yes. settings and stuff um yes by by default you know yeah and i guess just to follow on so there's different you've written a guide for members of crypto with cash that um that outlines the different types of crypto wallet because you just give people a quick overview of of the different types of crypto wallet yeah so there are software wallets that you can download on your phone on your uh, laptop computer and there are hardware wallets so essentially a hardware wallet is a small physical device that you would use to physically approve transactions being made from that wallet. Um, it adds an uh, extra layer of security and it protects your private keys, which is essentially your uh, pin code or password for your wallet. The, mm. the physical device stores that key on the, on, on the device there so that if you want to make a transaction from the wallet, you'd have to physically approve it. Whereas if it was in a software wallet, such as in a computer, 
someone, a hacker could potentially, of course, gain access to your computer and just send the assets to themselves. Yeah, I think that was a good summary. Um, and there's, yeah, there's like a whole load out there, but like you mentioned MetaMask and Trust Wallet are good software wallets. And I think Tre Trezor and... Yeah, Trezor and Ledger, they're very good. Uh, they're the good. most popular hardware wallets. Yeah, okay. So next question, when should I take profit? And I guess uh, we can throw in the next question, which is, should I sell when markets are down? So um so when should you take profits good question i think uh, ultimately that comes down to the individual's uh risk appetite what we try to do um at crypto of cash is when it goes up um when we more than double our money we take our initial um investment plus some profits and then we leave the rest in risk free and we've done that for many of our coins uh mm -hmm. which means no matter if it goes up or down it's a risk-free bet and if it goes up, then we make more money. If it goes down, we've already locked in some profits uh, and we got our initial investment back. Yeah, it's a really nice position to be in when you've when you've got a coin like that and you've taken the money out and then you can kind of emotionally emotionally yeah. set it free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And how about, so, so, I mean, it's maybe an obvious question, but um, should people sell when the markets are crashing, if the markets are crashing? It's a good question. And... I think it's worth looking at history when it comes to things like this. You know, historically, Bitcoin has dropped 50, 60 percent multiple times and rallied much, much higher. You know, um, of course, we have short term cycles where the markets go up and they crash. Um, but the long term trajectory is upwards. So even if Bitcoin does fall, then um, long term is going to be much higher, which is what we believe at Crypto of Cash. We focus on long term investing as opposed to short term, you know, um, short term investments. Yeah, like you said in your presentation, you know, zoom out, look at the chart. Absolutely, over, yeah. You know, a decade. Um, and this kind of follows on from that, actually. So how do you time markets? And yeah. I guess, it's, and should you try and time markets? I mean, into that, actually. So the reason we focus on the long term is because it's very difficult to time cryptocurrency markets and global markets. I mean, you, it's why you hear about all these funds, you know, losing all their money is because they've been caught on the wrong side of a trade and they mm. lose everything. So what we try to do is we get rid of the risk side of that by focusing on long term. And we don't see crashes as, uh, you know, a reason to panic, but actually as opportunities to stock up on coins while they're cheap, because we're focused on the long term. And we simply believe that fundamentally, these coins are going to be much higher in the future. Yeah. And also, there's something you recommend to crypto cash members called dollar cost averaging, which I think is a great technique. Could you just give people a quick overview of what that yeah, is? So essentially, with dollar cost averaging, you divide up your budget and you buy a certain amount every week or every month, regardless of price. That way you get the average price over the long term. Yeah. So, yeah, it's that simple. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and it's just really it's, it helps like sort of get your emotions out of it because I think you're that's not, a very yeah. big aspect of it so, yeah. because if you see prices falling down you don't panic because you're like okay i'm gonna buy regardless if it goes yeah. up you're not like oh let me buy more let me buy more i'm gonna miss out you buy the set amount regardless every month and you get the average price yeah it does require that long-term attitude to investing which is kind of leads into the next question which is can you make more money day trading than long-term investing uh day trading is I mean, there, I've, I've come across loads of people on Instagram and social media offering their services of being, you know, yeah. amazing day <laughs> traders. But I highly doubt it. It's, you know, you can look up the statistics online. Um, if you look up what is the profit profitability of day traders, it's very, very low. I think less than 10 percent mm. make uh, profits consistently. So anyone that does claim to be able to make trades, uh, a lot of money from day trading, um, I'd, I'd, I'd question I'd, I'd question that definitely yeah I mean just speaking as someone who's written for the financial industry for like a decade now and worked with various day traders and other traders like it, it the people that can do it over over decades are really far and few between like it is it's a job like you have to approach it as a job and like a kind of and for a lot of them it was their job you know they worked in sort of stock market um, yeah. you know they worked in the markets and stuff but like it's it's, it's doable it's just you have to approach it like a job, I think, and it is 
really hard. <laughs> and I think you get the, an aspect of su uh, survivorship bias in that yeah, you mainly hear yeah. about the ones who have won or, or have become very successful from it. You don't hear about the 99% of people who haven't become successful. Yeah. And have lost everything from day trading. So, yeah, and no, I agree. Yeah. So, um, do you do crypto options trading? No, we don't deal with uh, crypto options. We just focus so that, on long term investing. Yeah. So, for anyone that, uh, doesn't know what that is. It's essentially using leverage, so money you don't really have to kind of amp up your trades. And um, yeah, there's, so we, there, there's risks of uh, liquidation with that, and we we stay away from them. Yeah, we're too clever for that. Um, <laughs> is crypto a get rich quick scheme? Another question that I get a lot. I always tell people that you can get rich quick in crypto, but it's not a get rich quick scheme. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, of course, you can you can invest like a hundred dollars in a meme coin, and it can go up a million percent, and, can, and you can become rich from it. But that doesn't mean that crypto as a whole and as an industry is a get rich quick scheme. There are some very strong fundamental projects who are going to change the world in the future, and uh, that doesn't mean it's a get rich quick scheme. No, no, because you, yeah, like you said, you can lose a lot of money, but yeah, the opportunity is there. Um... So next question, why do you personally in, yeah, we're getting personal now, Cash. Why do you personally invest in crypto? I personally invest in crypto because I think it's a very interesting industry to be in. You know, um, there's a lot of potential and I, I feel like it, in a way, it banks the unbanked. It allows people to be in charge of their own finances where we've become very used to, you know, banks controlling all our money with us. We have to ask them whether we can send money from one person to another. We have to pay significant amounts of fees when it comes to sending money abroad, for example. But with mm. crypto, you can send a million dollars, a billion dollars for, for maybe a dollar uh, in, in transaction fees. And I think it's going to revolutionize um, the finance space for sure. So you, as well as sort of like the monetary investing side, you are like quite interested in the technology and the, the disruption, I guess, to that tech yeah, and cause. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can download a wallet on your app, on your phone, phone right now and send money <laughs> to absolutely anyone. And there's no one that can stop you. And um, you don't have to wait until the weekday. You don't, there's no bank holidays on the blockchain, you know. Oh, yeah. You can send yeah. money whenever you want. Yeah, like when the bank closes at like five or whatever and everyone's working yeah. nine to five. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I find that side of crypto really interesting too, sort of like the the implications it has sort of socially and like economically and how things might look differently. And But it's not the side of crypto that get, get, gets talked about a lot. It gets yeah. talked about in the crypto cash community, I'd say. Like we talk about that on the podcast we do and stuff, but it's kind of a lot of people are very money focused, which is fair enough, you know, but... <laughs> there is that aspect too, I guess. Um, yeah. So another personal-ish question. What mistakes have you personally made investing in crypto? Mm, that's a good question. I mean, sometimes, as with any investment, the market simply just doesn't go your way. There have been uh, projects that I've invested in. It was going to be uh, decentralized dating. So it, you'd, you would create your account and you'd be able to communicate with other people. And there was no company like backing the the sort of there, there was no platform that you do this. You do this all through the blockchain. Uh, as I said, you can send messages to anyone. Um, and this was, uh, I invested it in this project at the time where there was um, all of these dating websites getting hacked and their data leaked and mm. people being I remember exposed that, actually, for, yeah. for having yeah. affairs. So I yeah, thought, I okay, that. you know, this, but on the blockchain makes sense because the blockchain cannot be hacked. These messages will never be exposed. Um, it made sense at the time, but it never picked up, and the the project essentially failed. Um, yeah, yeah, this this sort of happens. I'll give you one. I could a mistake I could have made, which I bought at the high in twenty eighteen, Bitcoin Ethereum high, and then I could have sold, but it dropped. It basically dropped uh, halved in price over the next year so i've got good timing yep. when it comes to investing and i could have sold but i just didn't and i just forgot about it and then come sort of 2021 it's like double or oh, well it got quadrupled i guess like yeah, it's gone course. up so exactly. yeah a, a testament for lazy long-term investing <laughs> exactly um, yeah. um so should people invest in stocks and other assets as well as crypto I mean, a lot of people are saying that now, you, you know, a lot of people from the traditional finance world are very skeptical about crypto, but they're realizing that it's a force to be reckoned with. And it's worth having 
a diversified pr portfolio in, in that you put a certain percentage of your net worth in crypto so as to profit from the potential rise. And if it, you know, ultimately fails, which I don't think it will, then you've only, you know, potentially lost a certain, a small percentage of your net worth. So a lot of people are starting to diversify into crypto by investing billions, as as we saw with Elon Musk, for example, he invested mm. $1.5 billion. And I think we're going to see that more of that in the future. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Um... Okay, so now we've got a few more questions. So do you use technical analysis as well as your fundamental analysis uh, strategy, which, are, which is what you've just taken people through? Yeah, so it's good to look at the charts and be up to date with the uh, latest news, latest updates um, in terms of development. Um, it's, look, it's good to look at the recent price action as well. But ultimately, because we are focused on the long term, we, we mainly use technical analysis to find... Um, great spots for maybe loading up on um, potential price dips. So if it dips in, in value, we look at areas in which we see price potentially going towards. That way we can use buy, buy orders lower down to actually bring our average down and um, stock up while the prices are low because we are focused on the, on the future potential of the project. Yeah, I should say that in each newsletter write up you do for the, your crypto recommendations, you always give the buy up to price, which yeah. is where you know the level people should buy up to basically. Like so, for Mina it was four dollars. So buy Mina if it's under four dollars. Yeah. You also give like lower buy, lower down buy order prices for people that want to sort of try and get a you know pick up on any dips and that kind exactly. of thing. Exactly. Yeah. So if the more. market goes down, we're again we're not seeing it as a a reason to panic we're seeing it as an opportunity to buy lower mm. uh, because we believe you know prices will be much higher in the future yeah and our uh, crypto cash community community member graham is very good at that stuff absolutely yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so will blockchain technology replace the traditional financial system big question <laughs> that's a good question um to be honest i don't think it will replace it i think it will complement it in the sense that they will both coexist at the same time. And there, are, there will be people who simply prefer to work within the crypto space and those who are you know, still, still in, in the belief that the traditional markets are better. I think it's good to have different choices and those who prefer crypto will come to this industry and those who prefer the tra fi traditional finance world will stay where they are. Yeah, I think that's a more realistic take than kind of it just annihilating yeah, all centralized uh, finance. Exactly. I feel like a lot of people say, oh, Bitcoin's going to take over the world, mm. maybe in 100 years, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. Um, I, I feel like I take a more conservative approach when it comes to things like that. I feel like they will coexist. And like I said, yeah. those who want to use crypto will, will come to this industry and those who don't will stay where you are. We've got two more questions. One, uh, what happens if the government bans crypto? And then I'll uh, finish on a positive question. <laughs> Good question. I mean, um, I think personally, personally speaking, I think that's highly undoubted, uh, unlikely. I mean, Rishi Sunak recently said that he wants to make Britain a crypto hub. Right. Okay. Uh, so that's very interesting. I think he's, um, I mean, we need some regulation to allow companies to know to what extent they can actually, what services they can offer. Um, Again, I think I'm, I'm different to other people within the industry who say that we don't need any regulation. I'm, I'm, again, I feel like I'm more realistic. I think we do need some regulation mm. um, so that companies don't don't feel like, uh, so they're allowed to innovate in a way that they're not worried about later on getting in trouble. You know, we need, we need yeah. um, guidelines and we need regulation to help them do that. Um, I don't think cryptocurrencies will be banned uh, it's just highly unlikely. And even if governments wanted to ban them, it's a decentralized technology. It, they won't be able to stop it. So I don't think they're going to try and ban it. Yeah, it'd be difficult. We've already seen actually in when uh, crypto mining was banned in China, they just, uh, I think uh, most of the mining moves moved to like Kazakhstan cause, because yeah. it's a global, a global currency, a global technology. You know, it would take a concerted effort from all governments to yeah uh, shut it down um, and again i think that's a, a misconception as well because in a recent news report i read there's still a significant amount of mining taking place in china okay. um and the interesting thing is you can simply have uh, as i mentioned an app on your phone and you'd be able to send transactions there's no one who can stop you from doing that yeah, um, it's, yeah, decentralized. yeah. it's not like a, a single company that you can go and say okay yeah. i'm closing <laughs> this building down 
I'm, <laughs> I'm locking the doors, you know, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, and talking about Mina, like if you can run a, a node, help run the network on the mobile phone, you know, like yeah. that's really hard to sh shut down. Um, final question, Cash. I'm going to tell people a bit more about the Crypto with Cash service uh, sure. in a moment. Um, do you want more people to join or would you like to say, should they all just go away now? <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> the, more, the more the merrier. And what do you think is a fun aspect of the service? Um, to be honest, one of my favorite aspects of this service is the community. I mean, we have we have we have a lovely group there. We have people who have actually started creating guides for other members. Um, yeah. You know, walking them through um, and showing them the tips that they've come across that have helped them. You know, um, we have we have some good banter, especially when prices go up, even when prices go down. So yeah. I think the community is definitely one of my favorite aspects of of, of the service. Yeah, me too. And when prices go down, it offers that emotional kind of because sticking to stuff long term is hard in, in investing, you know, like yeah. it's, it is an emotional thing as much as everything else. So having a group to turn to to kind of, you know, are the coins we're investing in? Has anything changed fundamentally with them? No. OK, look, it helps you to sort of not panic, make panic, sure. rash, rash decisions. Basically. For sure. Okay. For sure. Um, so, OK, thank you for your time, Cash. Thank you for walking everyone through your strategy and answering those questions very well, I thought. Uh, hopefully they're helpful to everyone. I'm going to say goodbye to you now if you could make yourself disappear. Thank you and take care. Bye. See you later.